of uh, Till and Needs podcast. I am Connie, your host, and I am podcasting from Santiago, Chile. I am Connie underscore Nitz in Instagram and Chile Nitz in Periscope and Ravelry. Um, first of all, I would like to start this episode by thanking everybody so much for watching my podcast, everybody that uh, left comments. Uh, they were wonderful. I'm so thankful for all this community. I feel extremely happy to have gotten so much feedback. I am over the moon by all the people that have messaged me talking about the, the two, two at a time talk um, button technique and how much the, it's changed their lives. Um, it's incredible and I'm super happy about it. Um, Second, I would like to um, say hello to a few people that introduced themselves on Ravelry. There's a group um, for Chilinets podcast and some people said hi, so I'm just going to name them. Um, Purple Pinwheel, she's Deborah from Utah, hi. Uh, Mac, Maggie from New Jersey, Live Momentously, Jocelyn from Miami, but she's currently living in Arlington, Virginia. Um, Busy Mom 07755. She's Miriam from New Jersey. Um, she and I met at Rhinebeck, and I think we're gonna meet next year, so I can't wait for it. And uh, Lasanda Solomon 16. She's called Lashanda, and she's from Detroit. Hi, girls. Thank you so much for saying hi. I loved hearing, uh, reading your stories about how you learn how to knit and how you connected to the crafting world. It was really cool. I replied to all of you. And I hope that many more in the future will say hi as well. Um, next up is a little section that's going to be called Ask Away. Um, it's also in my Ravelry group and there you can ask anything you want, ideally knitting, but if you're curious about something else I can maybe uh, reply to that as well. So I got two people asking me different things. One is Larissa from San Antonio, Texas. Her Ravelry name is LN Gray RN, um, and she wrote, I have a question, I'm new to knitting socks. I was watching the Legacy Knits podcast and she said you taught her how to knit socks two at a time. Do you have any special tips or tricks for knit knitting two at a time socks? Thank you. Um, so uh, basically what I taught Chelsea uh, is how I learned how to knit socks. First I try one at a time toe up because I didn't I wasn't able to do the top down and now after a few tries it's toe up still more comfortable to me. Some people do like it the other way around and that's fine. It's just a thing about like every every one of us knit differently, right? So everyone has their own thing. So for me it's toe up, maybe for you, um Larissa, it's gonna be top down. You just need to try each one. Um, what I taught Chelsea is the Judy's Magic Cast On, I believe it's called. Um, I would have to show it in a video, but if you if you if you YouTube it, uh, you'll probably find it. That's how I learned. And basically, I did that with just one cake of yarn, and I did the button up the button technique, um, and started from there. And I'm gonna tell you that it was easy the first time because it's a little bit cumbersome when you're not used to it. But uh, in the end I got really used to knitting this way and I don't think I can knit one at a time for example because every single time that I've tried my socks just don't look the same uh, lengthwise and sizewise. I don't really mind that my socks look different but um, when I knit them separately they just they're like one sock for me and one sock for my husband or for Emma just say I don't I can't deal with counting rows and all that stuff, so to what a time it is for me. Uh, next question is Knitting Crazy, that's her rivalry name, and she's Kathy from Ohio. She asked me, what is the better brioche pattern for someone who has tried brioche but failed? Well Kathy, I, well, I haven't failed at brioche because the only thing I've ever knit in brioche is my exploration station, which I'm going to show you in a few minutes. Um, I do think though that as a beginner it's a pretty good pattern to delve into the technique because it's just a little bit at a time. 
it's got different um, stitches but the brioche section is very small it has very good videos uh, done by the designers Dean West and I, I recommend it um, he also said you should start with a scrap yarn to just um, give it a try but I just jumped in and I had no trouble at all I could even do that while my kids were running around so basically I just watched the videos a couple of times and then I was all set I don't think I could start brioching right now because I completely forgot again but these videos that he made were absolutely perfect and I think they're a really good starting point for any other um, brioche pattern I think Mina Phillips the Knitting Expat also has a brioche pattern out. Um, it's just like a brioche, um, entirely brioche shawl. I think that would probably be a good one because you just um, knit back and forth and I think it's just like um, um, increasing on each side. I think I haven't knit it, I want to, I just haven't had the chance to start it. Uh, but I think it's also a pretty good pattern, not like very complicated and um, like ha like maybe in the round, I'm not really sure, I haven't even tried, so maybe I'll be better fit to answer this question in the future, but for now, my brioche beginner thing would be the exploration station. Um, okay, for this section, I wanted to show you a few of the shawls that I've been knitting in the past. You'll probably see like a very specific color scheme, because I love bright colors, as you know. Um, so the first one, and, and, and I'm just going to show you like the ones I wear all the time because I've made so many, but uh, right now sort of like in the summer season, so in the evenings when it gets a little bit cooler, I, can, I get to wear all these shawls. So first up is my Exploration Station. I've knit two uh, so far. I think I might knit many more because I love playing with all the colors um, and all the stitches. It makes it a really dynamic knit. So. Um, here it is. This is my first one. I put the camera a little bit closer on this podcast because a lot of you guys told me that I was too far away and that you couldn't see uh, properly. So I hope that you can see better this time. I knit this out of Araucania yarn. Uh, all the solid colours are Araucania. It's 100% merino and the uh, speckly yarn was dyed up by the flying kettle. Um, Jocelyn, she's a lovely yarn dyer, I love her style, she has bright colours, muted colours, everything. Um, this one in particular has a little bit of Selena, it gives it like, to me it gives it like that little pop of um, girliness and I really like it. Um, I'm not sure about the Araucania yarn though because I'm not really aware if they're still um, dyeing yarn. I met the owner a few years ago and she said she was going to stop uh, doing it because she was suffering from stress or something but I've, I've kept seeing it when I travel in stores so maybe somebody else um, somebody else bought the company, I'm not really sure. My second expression station I knitted out of my own yarn. Um, by the way, the other expiration station, I don't have the colorway names uh, of the Araucania. Um, I bought them in an expo here in Chile and they were just um, selling all their uh, extras out and they had no labels, so I can't really tell you which ones they are, but uh, I'll put on the down bar the colorway of the flying kettle yarn. Um, this it's, it's my expression station, it's out of Chilinitz. The purple is called uh, Electricity. The uh, green is called Radioactive. The yellow one is called Sol. And this variegated is called Speckled. It's called um, Imagination. Um, you might have seen me wearing this at Rainbow if, if you met me. Um, as I said, I might knit a few more because I really like the pattern. I love that it's quite large and it sort of dresses up everything you're wearing. I might knit like a more muted version to wear with black or something like that. Um, next up is my Clara's shawl. 
I knit this when I first learned how to knit uh, lace and how to knit with beads. This is a pattern by Laura Nelkin. I love her patterns. She's so knowledgeable and she's a genius when it comes to beadwork. Um, this is also Araucania yarn, still no clue about the name of the colorway. Um, but I wear this when I have something like more formal to go to. And everyone's always like, oh my god, it's got beads. And they sort of really like the pattern and the technique behind it. Um, the next one I really like wearing is my Pure Joy. I also knit it out of my yarn. The pink one is called Maybe. And this one is in the Midas base. It's my Gold Stellina base. And the green one is in my MCM base. It's called Nimbus. The colorway is called Apple Teeny. I kind of really like the way it looks. My mom's here looking at me, so... <laughs> She's going like that. <laughs> um, and the last one that I really like wearing was designed by a very dear friend of mine. It's called Because I Love You Wrap. I knit it out of, um, this is a, a, a while before I started dyeing yarn, so the yellow one is not mine. It's called, um, um, it's the neon yellow by Knit Picks. I'm not really sure, highlighter yellow maybe? And the blue or uh, speckled is called, I don't recall the name, but it's by Little, Little Longgrass. I'll just uh, corroborate that on the down bar because I'm not, I always forget the name of this Daya. She has um, initials on the brand now, but it's a, like a longer name. I'll just... Um, so yes, Amy, thank you so much for designing this. I love it. It's one of my favorite shawls. It kind of matches my <laughs> my blouse today. Um, I definitely want to knit another one, but there's so much stuff that I want to cast on that it's sort of been put like behind everything else. Uh, right, so um, that's it for now. Maybe I'll show you something more next episode. There's like a ton of things that I've been knitting and that I have knit, so there's a lot of things to show off. But I, before I go on, I wanted to show you um, some of my finished objects. Remember last week I showed you a couple of socks? Um, so I finished this pair of socks. I'll put the name of the yarn dyer here. Uh, I love them. I, can't wait to wear them. I did though notice um I knit them I knit them on 2.25 millimeter needles. I believe that's a size US one. Um, but you know what I think I'm knitting tighter than before because now they're they feel a little bit too snug. I might have to either increase a needle size to 2.5 or maybe I'll have to add a few stitches. I normally knit uh, 56. I might have to go up to 60. I'll try both ways and see which one sort of uh, feels a little bit better. But I'm still really chuffed with my new socks. I can't wait to wear them. It's summer now, so I think I'm going to have to wait until the winter. But um, aren't they awesome and bright? I finished the Rhinex socks as well. Just give me one second so that I can put them on the sock blockers. I need more sock blockers but I just haven't gotten around to get getting new ones. Um, these socks felt like they took forever in finishing. I don't know why. Sort of um, took me a really long time. These though I knit by mistake on a 2.5 millimeter needle. I normally I've always knitted knitted knit my socks on 2.25 for some reason I just picked the wrong size for these and they actually feel a little bit better than the other ones. My mom likes them, she's approving. <laughs> Aren't they cool? I love that they're mismatching but sort of, you know, the opposite of each other. They're really fun. 
the variegated yarns Madeleine Tosh in the Magic colorway. The pink is Hedgehog Finest in the Harajuku colorway. I love the pink, it's lovely. I, I'd like to knit a sweater out of this. What do you think? Oh. Right? Very nice. Um, and as for whips, I've been very festive. I've sort of been bitten by the festive bug this past two weeks. Um, and so I've started knitting ornaments, or well, kind of. Um, I had a lot of cotton that I bought a long time ago. Um, and so I saw this pattern on Ravelry. It's called, uh, I'll link it uh, on the show notes. It's a free pattern. And look at how cute these are. I just have these for now. I'm working on the third one. I'm not in a hurry. Uh, I bought um, 12 uh, Christmas baubles. Um, maybe thinking that I'd be able to cover them all up. But I haven't had so much time so because I've been like trying to finish all the other whips, right? So I have these two so far. Um, I wanted to get 12 done, but I think I might be able to just make six or seven before Christmas. But then it gives me, I'll just leave it in that bag and continue throughout the year and maybe I'll have the 12 for next year. And that's what I'm hoping for. Uh, I was knitting on the Seven Seas of Rye Shawl as well. I didn't bring it with me this time, but I've knit like an inch, a little bit more than an inch. Basically, I'm about to finish the first skein. It asks for three skeins, but I think that I might just finish it on two because it's quite large already. Um, I'll show you more progress on the next episode because I just didn't want to just show just a little bit. Um, that's it for finished objects. And um, before I go on to what everybody's been asking for, the skein of Bravo yarn with my mom, um, I wanted to let you know that my shop has been closed for the past few weeks. I'm dealing with, sorry, I am dealing with admin issues with the host and the website and all that sort of stuff, so I'm redesigning it, I'm moving it to a different host, I'm getting my own domain, so it's been taking me for a little bit. Um, I ask for you to be patient, I'm hoping that it will be sorted by next week or the one after that, hopefully. Um, but if you have any questions, just uh, private message me and I'll be happy to reply to any of those. Um, so now I'm going to invite my mom to come over and we'll talk about some art, shall we? Hello again, I'm here Hi. with my mom. It's a really hot summer day, isn't it? Absolutely. It's like 34 degrees Celsius today. I'm not sure how much that is in Fahrenheit, but it's a lot, right? Yeah. And I closed all my house windows today so we didn't have too much environment noise, like dogs barking and people playing. So hopefully you'll um, be able to understand us a little bit because we're a little bit like, ooh, with all this crazy weather. Yeah. So first things first, my mom wanted to see the um, yeah the, la the last... What happened with Two weeks Bravo. ago we filmed? Two, Two weeks, weeks ago. ago, yeah. Uh, Bravo, um, skein. So I will put an image of my mom's photo challenge here. <coughs> and here it is. Here it is. Here's the here picture. It is. <laughs> and here is the skein. Um, I sort of noticed that the image was, the picture was quite dark, but it had lots of um, sort of cream natural color skein. So I wanted to sort of um, put that on this one, sort of like a little bit more light to the image. Um, you, you won't be able to tell neither from this or probably from the photo that I'm going to take and add here. But I did add a little bit of green speckles to it because the door behind the yarn in the image, in the painting, has a slight um, like green tone, yes. right? Um, I can sort of show you 
more of the uh, tones. Hopefully this is showing up well. I try to use um, oranges and bright reds and the yellow and of course the brown but sort of like in the photo. It's there. beautiful. Really it's a very good work here with brow. <laughs> so brow, you know what brow means in Spanish. Uh, I in think English. it means in English as well, isn't it? Yeah, bravo, I know. Bravo, I know. yeah, um, like, um, yeah. Bravo. Like, clap, clap, I don't clap, know, clap. I have no idea how to yes. say it. Applause. Yeah, applause, <laughs> applause. So I will applause this uh, with the very good work of bravo. Huh? <laughs> well, that's it. So yeah. next um, challenge will be? Will be an American artist, uh, Jackson Pollock. Uh, see, we have a lot of work here. Uh, Jackson Paul. Um, I'm scared. <laughs> no, don't. I have some papers because of my, well, I have some notes. Some notes, yeah. Well, he was born at uh, Cody at Wyoming. Um, uh, he is uh, an abstract. Uh, he he make he he's a uh, he belongs to the movement of abstraction expression. But he made of that movement um, a little more special way of painting. First of all, he, he didn't use the brush, he used sticks. He used uh, anything to paint but uh, not brush at all. And he also uh, used sand that he add to the canvas. He worked in a long can a longer, uh, canvas a very big canvas over the floor because he liked to put... Uh, Did he throw paint? Yes, he was well. He, he, he began to drop, he, uh, to use the dropping... Uh, splattering? Sp splattering, dropping um, colors of, uh, over the, the or color painting over the canvas and... Um, it like seems, this? Yes, like this. So, like this. here it is. I'm not sure if you can see that well, but I'm gonna I'm gonna do a slideshow again on, at the end. I of think the... that the, here it's not so bright the color that he used. Uh, he used a lot of more colors that Connie is going to show you. Mm. Uh, you can here you have two more uh, more more kinds. It's I I, I, I think that you, you I, need to, to go. Uh, no, no, because the camera won't zoom in automatically. It's just set for our distance. Oh, fine. <laughs> mm, yes. Um, T is going to put a lot of pictures. I'll, I'll, I'll create so a can, slideshow like last yeah. time so you guys can see it up close. He, he was known as, a, as his unique style. Um, he suffered of alkalines, but uh, I don't want to speak about his disease. It, that is not very important. He was a great artist. He uh, recognizing, uh, recognize it in he recognize, he recognize, yeah. Yeah. yes, absolutely, uh, with, especially with Peggy Gangenheim. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, Peggy, Peggy Gangenheim is a great collector of art. And, is that uh, from the Guggenheim Museum? Yes, of course. Right. Yeah, and um, well, he was was well known in his in his time, but uh, unfortunately, he passed away very very. Um, Young, yes, he was just 44 years old, oh. and uh, he died in a crash car, in a car an accident, crash. in a car, in a car crash. Yeah, really. So, oh. um, but he, he, he was he legacy. A lot of painting. What happened? I'm oh, sorry. Just I remember. Yeah. I remember. I'm not laughing. I'm here dead. Because I'm really... I say dead. You know, but I was looking at the dictionary, and I think that dead is not so bad. No, it's you not. Know. <laughs> I thought that people would say passed away or something like not. You know, yeah. but I get it. It's just that I sort of got yeah, blind. Yeah, but you get it. I think. I'm really sorry. Yeah, okay. just, I'm not laughing at the actual event. Yeah. It's just yeah, um, us. I'm laughing at us. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, he was, um, he used uh, bright colors on his canvas. Um, he didn't have a special one, but uh, you can find uh, many, many, uh, how do you say the word to that? Mixed. Mixed, you, uh, you will find lots of mixed of colors. 
that can make a great picture. Uh, he moved to um, to south of the United States, and uh, no, that is not from him. Yeah, just 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 here. All right. Okay. okay. Well, we can show that one. That one is a very good one. The, that one. That one is a very good one. Yes, this one. He this most of of this picture are inspired of uh, of the sky because he moved to Palm Spring and then he find a beautiful sky there so at night maybe he can he he was watching the stars seven stars he has a picture of that and um, he want to connect one star with other so the drip that he put over the canvas is that feeling he's just a feeling artist, he wants to take away his feeling and put throw it, them on the yeah, and throw it in inside the canvas. So you you can you can imagine what people are feeling when they they stand or uh, in front of his picture and see this long long uh, canvas with a lot of dripping uh, painting over, and you. You can feel that you are looking at the sky at it's like night. Physical work. Yes, like it. like like that one. Yes, and uh, well, he he don't have so he has a lot of story. He he was uh, he married with a big uh, he with Lee Kramer. Uh, she was an artist also, and she was um, uh, she, she was uh, an important influence in his work uh, and him in his career and he and in in his legacy because she moved. Uh, is she still alive? Yeah. yeah. No, she's no. not alive now. I'm not sure, but I think that she's not alive. Yeah. But she moved very lo a lot with after he da he da he passed away. She she was taking care of all the legacy that right. that. Uh, he left behind. He left behind, yes. Right. So, well, that's, that's it. it. That's for it for, for Jackson, Jackson Pollock. And he was oh, right. Oh, so, right. what is the uh, image that I need to dye in a skein of yarn? You need to give me a chance. Yeah. Oh, I think that... Uh, Will we do this one or you should can we find one on, uh, on, and put it here? I think that we, we shall find... Uh, this is black, red and yellow. I it's very it's interesting. Brown. It's nice. Uh, brown and black, brown. yes. Is uh, yeah. I can think that you can do with something at all. You can choose I think whatever can. one, and then it will be too similar to this one. I yes, think. maybe just a different color. Uh, no, palette, much like more. That. Yes. How about that one? I I like it. This one because it has blue and, and red and and has a lot of color here. And it's called this one. Sorry, we're talking about Sorry. This one. that one. Well, you, you, you need to put this one uh, I'll, in a I'll big scale. I'll put it on the slideshow so you guys can see. Mm. It's called... Guardianes del Secreto. So it's uh, in English. Keepers of the Secret? Yes. It's an interesting name, actually. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And, and the last thing that I need to, to tell you, for me, he was very handsome. Really? Yeah. Really? Isn't there a picture of him? Yeah. No, I don't have a picture now. But you oh, can I put, put one in the first. You, you put um, one on. Right. Uh, yeah, he was very. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it. <laughs> that's okay, so it. thank you so much for watching the second episode of the of the Chilean Eats podcast. I hope you enjoyed this one. Thank you very uh, much. I, um, and you like the yarn that I dyed? Yeah. Um, I'm sorry about the shop stuff. Um, I know some of you have been asking, so I'm hoping that it'll get sorted really soon. Um, and I'm hoping that we'll be able to record probably yeah. in a week from now. Well, you you, you see. You yeah. See. So well. Uh, I'll be uh, here with you. another one. Well, sorry. With another I'm artist. An artist. Do you know which one you're picking? Um, so I'm is, not sure, but I think that I, I will pick a, a Spanish one mm. from Spain. Right. Uh, yeah. I it's I have a, I have one in mind, in my mind. So uh, yeah. Very intriguing. Surprise. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So thank you again. I hope to see you again. Um, I'll put all the information on the notes down below and on the Ravelry group. And if you have any questions, just uh, PM me. Bye. Okay, bye. Thank you. Bye.